Good morning, Centropy Growers. This is Farmer Jones on video number 33. And today we're going to demonstrate how we harvest bananas. And when is the best timing to pull the banana stem down? So if you look up at that bunch of bananas there, and these are lady fingers by the way, we can see that the bats and the birds are telling us that this hand is uh, starting to get sweet. So they've had a little chew and they've flown off, but that's telling me or signaling to me that those bananas are ready to come down. So being a lazy farmer and um, a risk adverse farmer, I, I don't like getting up on ladders. And as you know, uh, I like to do things the easy way. So I let the bats and the birds tell me when they're ready. Now some farmers put blue silver bags over the hands to speed up the ripening. And that's fair enough, if you've got a ladder. But as you can see, the forest floor here in our syntropic system isn't quite stable or flat enough to start putting ladders up. So this is the way I've uh, I go roll and I work with the bats and the birds and they tell me for free. So do we just cut that stem off with our trusty stick and let the bananas drop on the ground? Well, no, because that's a fair height. It's about two meters and you may damage your fruit. How else can we tell that the bananas are ready? They usually get a nice yellow tinge just starting. They change colour. Secondly, uh, the little bananas are usually fat. The unripes are skinny and the ridges along the seams of the bananas stick out. But clearly the birds are telling me that this is ready to come down. And why would you leave the bananas up there just for the uh, animals to chew even more and damaging the stock that you wish to sell at the markets? So first, with one or two bananas they chew, that's my indication. So well, how do we start? We've got a big clump of bananas here. And of course I've been very lazy and I haven't taken down the unnecessary stems for biomass, which I should have done by now. We've actually got too many stems in there. But for today's purpose, we're just gonna take down the, the grandma stem. And uh, I'll show you a few techniques for getting rid of it and of course the number one reason we use bananas in syntropic systems is for the large amount of biomass that they produce. For me bananas are just a side benefit but there's more than you know 30, 40, maybe 50 kilos of biomass in that stem there. So let's have a go. Now we start by just taking down the leaf and uh, that just makes it easier for you to see what you're doing. So those of you who have watched my previous videos know that my trusty $10 tool here is very valuable. No ladders. And look at those great leaves falling down. And I normally just place them like that to cover the soil. Now they're great because they cover quite a lot, don't they? And very easy to obtain. So that's that. There's one more. And another one. Okay, so we've got our stem there and the hand sticking out. Now what's a safe way to bring it down? Let's have a look. So if you go, similar to cutting down a tree, if you go about this high, machete swing high, later you're going to be slicing that stem down the centre. But for now, we just want to take a little cut in the back of the banana stem 
so that the hand just gently falls down without hitting the ground. So, try that. And then this is the trusty tool again. And bring it down. Didn't go quite according to plan, but here we go. <laughs> Thankfully our bananas are not damaged. Now notice I've cut that bell off. Once the flower stops spinning baby bananas off, cut the bell off once the stem extends a couple of inches, just a couple of inches past the hand. And that'll stop wasting energy into the bell or the flower and put that energy into fattening up these guys. All right, so there's your hand. And here we have some beautiful stem ready to dice up. So, at this stage, we want to make these in small sections. And you want to split them down the centre. So get, take good aim, something like that, and put them on the trees that you want it to put on. Here's another great stem. Obviously, make sure your machete is razor sharp. This makes life easy. I'm trying to get splits down like that. Two halves. Find a tree that needs it. Say, for example, this little papaya here. And there's quite a few months of food for that little baby. And that's why these bananas are so generous in giving food to their friends. There's another baby there. And you can feed all the stems around those guys. Now here is our target tree in this row. This is a citrus and there's Obviously need food too, so just set up your banana stems around, arrange them neatly. And use those to feed your trees. Like that. Might cut them again. That way, wherever you like. So this is really great food and why? Because if you notice in the bottom of the banana, it's full of water. Some of these stems can carry up to 80 litres of water and they're literally the water tank of your, of your forestry system. So a few months that'll break down, it's full of ca calcium, potassium, phosphorus, all the good things that our other friends need. So we have to finish the stem. Get him out of the way. Here we have this guy. We don't really want to leave him in there. So we need to split him down the centre and take him out. I'll just move that just so for the film's sake. That has to be split down there. So if you take careful aim, and that's a good shot, then you just take those guys out like that. Here we go. More food for your little baby papaya. Great moth, great compost eventually. And just repeat the process. Like that. There's one little there, you can use a bit of a feed. If you having trouble swinging your machete in there 
then we need one of those. These are a great little tool. So split your pen first. And that's very easy. Here's our fruit tree there. Uh, again. I've got all that beautiful plant food for this um, Tahitian lime here. It's going to last a while, isn't it? So, this base stem here, we should really try to take it out. A, because you're using the biomass, but B, because it's possible for it to grow back, and you don't want that. That will suck the energy to all the other up and comings. And that stem will now not produce again. So in reality, we have to take him out as low as to the ground as possible and try to leave a little bowl shape in the top of the stem so the rain comes down, fills it up and rots it out. Now in some farms, conventional farms, they actually kill those stems with diesel, which is unbelievable and horrific. Imagine eating diesel injected into your bananas so we won't do that here we're certified organic so we'll just let it rot out the natural way and i'll show you so our trusty saw again There we have it, two beautiful lumps of tree food. Put it over there. There's a little papaya there. Give that something to eat. And as you can see, the banana is really generous, isn't it? It's got so much to give. We've basically fertilised almost five metres, four or five metres of your row with one stem. So just to finish the job off, just make sure you uh, just concave that a little bit. Just a little couple of little slices like that. Dig it out. That should do it. The water will collect in there when it rains and just rot that stem out and that's exactly what you want. So in reality, we've also got still too many stems here. So you would pick your uh, successional three and maybe that one and maybe you'd keep a that's grandma, that'll be mum, and you'd look around for one of the little pups coming up, and that's three, and the rest really should come out. Uh, and just use them as biomass. These are too big to dig up and plant. So really they're a fantastic resource in your syntropic system. So that's how we manage bananas, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's useful. Um, there's a lot, many other theories around bananas. Uh, in Brazil, they do things differently. They don't plant pups, they plant the corn and they cut it and turn it upside down and they think that growing up into a curve anchors the banana better. I'm sure it does. 
maybe they're a country that's subject to a lot of cyclonic weather. But here it's not so much of an issue, uh, here at our farm. And so far we've had no bananas falling over. We did experiment with the Brazilian method, but found it put the production of the banana back by one year. So while other stems were already flowering and fruiting, uh, the Brazilian method was still here. So I do a bit of research on the Brazilian method of planting uh, banana corms. But for us, it's not for us. We need bananas quick for our markets. Um, and we don't have those high wind problems here at our central Queensland farm. So hopefully that's useful to you. If you've got any other tips and thoughts you'd like to, uh, and ideas you'd like to suggest on the channel, just leave a comment and I'm very open to learning new things. And uh, that'll be over and out for Fig Tree Organic Farm. See you on the next video.